Hello fellow humans. So here we are with another CR6 video. Um, I've been focusing on these because that's the main printer that I use now and I know that there's a lot of issues and uh, possible you know, printing problems and I've been trying to go over some things and, and getting it all figured out. So here's another spread of what I've been printing so far. Um, there's a couple of new, I guess, new tolerance tests other than you know what's available so I have a little engine here um, that I printed it's, it's a print in place so it's all it's all one one print didn't take terribly long uh, you can hook a drill up to it if you want so you can make it go faster um, but it, it broke free pretty easily um, the tolerances were really good I did put a couple tiny drops of uh, oil in there to make it so it didn't squeak as much um, so that's pretty cool and then <clears throat> I did a Kind of a cutaway version. No oil on this one, so you'll be able to hear it. There's the uh, filament scraping, but you can see that you know it's you know a little visual toy, if you will. Um, the print quality is really good, I think, but uh, the tolerances could be a little better. <clears throat> and then over here, I have tracer from Overwatch. So this was printed with supports. Um, but the supports removed pretty easily. Um, and this is the, the filament that came with the printer. So um, you can see that I think a lot of the issues that people are having with the filament runout aren't necessarily based off of the filament itself. I think there's other underlying issues that, that I'm gonna go over um, later in the video. But you can see that it's, it's pretty detailed. This is scaled up, um, but it's still Pretty decent print, in my opinion. And then I have uh, an Owl, which was also printed with supports. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of supports because for me, they make it a little bit nicer. They, they keep the overhangs a little bit uh, better looking. Whoops. <clears throat> so you can see that the feathers um, are pretty detailed. You know, you have the, um, the wings, you can see, have pretty nice details on them. Um, it's sitting on a piece of wood. You can see the grains of the wood. Um, whoops. And then, of course, the face and the eyes. I did trim the beak a little bit because there was a little overhang uh, droopage underneath. But uh, overall, I think it came out pretty good for for a, a printer of this um, quality, I guess you could say. <clears throat> and then I started printing a lot of the government buildings. There's there's a set on Thingiverse. Um, it's a government buildings or government set collection, I should say. Uh, and the other, you know, it's very good quality as far as the the details. Um, I did use a um, exacto knife and the columns to get those cleared out because there was a, a little bit of stringing and, and glooping. But overall, I think it turned out really well. I believe this is the Library of Congress, or. And then this, no, wait, this is the Library of Congress. This is the Supreme Court, I believe. I don't know. I think I failed that part in high school. Um, but again, the details are really nice. Um, these are printed as is, no scaling, um, nothing like that. <clears throat> so that one's kind of small. This one does have some, some stringing there between the different parts of the building. Um, I did actually adjust uh, the settings for that. And which I'll go over in a later video. Um, ex the extrusion uh, distance is one of them, or, or the retraction distance, sorry. The retraction distance is one of them that really helps with that. Um, but that's some, something that a heat gun can clean up pretty quickly. You can see it came up pretty good. And it, you know, it's mostly flat. It's not technically detailed. It's just a lot of uh, ins and outs, but I think it came out really good. And of course I showed you the White House previously and that one came out really well. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do from this point is I wanna show you the things that I've done to the printer. Um, I, did, I did adjust the dual Z um, because it was offset a little bit. I did take apart the extruder, which was a very big mistake because <laughs> um, it's a little difficult. Creality does have a reassembly video, um, but it's still a little bit of a pain to get back together. Um, I did some modifications with the um, filament runout sensor. 
And then um, I did do, I don't know if you can see it, but over here, I did take off the, the plastic thing that was around this because every time I pressed on the screen, it made this weird popping noise. And what it was, it was the adhesive of the sticker um, getting stuck to the screen and then popping back up because it had too much tension on it. So I'm, I'm looking for a cover or some type of replacement to put around the bezel of the screen, but overall it's, it's not hurting it at all as long as you don't start uh, you know, digging at it with a screwdriver. Um, I also reflashed the firmware, which I'll go over as well. Um, when it comes to the firmware, there's two parts to it. You flash the firmware to the actual um, motherboard, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then also the LCD screen has a, a flashing that needs to be done as well. Because when you make changes to the firmware on this printer, it, it may change some aspects of the display. So it may show different graphics or different things like that. So um, you want to make sure that you flash not only the, the motherboard, but uh, the LCD as well. Um, and then I have some other filament that I printed with. Um, I haven't done a whole lot only because <clears throat> once I got it printing to where I thought it was good, um, I didn't really want to change much more. Uh, one of the other things I failed to mention was I, I made a, a change to the, the power switch over here because there were some issues with that. It was very um, spongy, I think is the word. So when you when you tried to turn it on, it was very easy to flip it on and off. And I think that's one of the issues that they were having with the switch is that the low quality, the, the springs inside, the spring steel, which I'll show you, um, wasn't very good. It was very, uh, uh, it was deformed, I guess you could say. And then um, what I did was I, I fixed it to where it would bend properly and it would make better contact. And I haven't had any issues with that. I have a Raspberry Pi plugged in, so I haven't had any issues with the USB as well. I did disconnect the 5 volt, so we'll go over that. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.